News for Jack starts right now with a breaking news alert. Breaking right now at 7, crews are responding to the scene of a plane crash. JFRD says this crash is fatal. It happened on Monument Road, which is near Craig Airport. We have a crew heading to the scene right now and we'll update you on air and online as soon as we learn more. Now to the latest out of Surfside. At least five people are dead. 156 people are still missing. This is a live look at the pile of rubble, what's left of the partially collapsed condo building. And we are entering day four of rescue efforts. We will get you a live picture coming up later in the morning show. But search and rescue teams are tunneling through debris looking for life. At this hour, four people killed in the collapse have been identified. Stacy Fang was 54 years old. Antonio and Gladys Lozano lived together in Unit 903. And Manuel LaFont, also 54 years old. Miami-Dade Fire and Rescue are using robots, dogs, drones, sonar, and cameras to assist in their search. Crews are working around the clock in teams of 10 to 12 responders. Miami-Dade Police says officers are working 12-hour shifts and days off are canceled. A 2018 engineering report shows the building had major structural damage to concrete under the property's pool. Officials are also looking at inspecting the North Building. Several residents there have decided to evacuate. Miami-Dade's mayor says there will be an audit for buildings 40 years and older. Nadia Romero joins us live this morning from Surfside. Nadia, today marks day four of search and rescue efforts. Are crews changing their search and rescue strategy today? Well, good morning, Zach and Jen. They are. We saw them using uh, heavy equipment those, to pull the debris off the top of the pile over the past couple of days. They're going to limit the use of that equipment and really focus in on the tunneling effort and going through a grid search pattern so they can methodically go through each area of the rubble. Remember, just yesterday, they were dealing with uh, big plumes of smoke and, and a fire that had sparked, and they were having trouble um, finding the source of that fire. So if they can limit the movement on the, the pile of debris, then maybe that will limit uh, fire sparking so that they continue their search and rescue efforts because they had to stop and build a trench yesterday. And that's the last thing you want to happen for some outside force to interfere with search and rescue efforts. Uh, we saw one more body we learned that was recovered yesterday, bringing that total up to five. They're hoping though today, and that's the key word, hope that they can find survivors. Zach and Jen. And Nadia, there's a lot of speculation about the cause of the collapse. What do we know about structural studies that show damage like cracking in the concrete prior to the collapse? Yeah, Zach just mentioned that 2018 structural field survey that was done. So uh, three years ago, showing that there were extensive cracks in the concrete walls and in, in the beams uh, over the, the pool area and on the roof. And we've heard from residents who used to live in this building say uh, that they saw uh, cracks in their units and that they alerted management. Now, we heard from the condo association's attorney who says, listen, this is a 40 year old building right on the beach. There's going to be some wear and tear, but that structural a survey shows more than just wear and tear. We know that at least two companies were contracted to work on this building. They had already begun roof repairs before the collapse. And so a lot of people are pointing to that report and the images of those cracks in the building as to maybe being the biggest reason why this building collapsed. And that has caused an audit to happen uh, throughout the county in Surfside and in a neighboring city as well. Nadia, when you talk about Surfside as a whole and neighboring cities, how is this collapse impacting these other areas? Yeah, we know that so many people are concerned about the cause of this collapse. So uh, a big question for them is, is how did this happen and could it happen to me? And, and as you all know, I mean, this is an area that we'll see, if not hurricane force winds and rains, they'll see tropical storm force winds and rains every single year. And that's been happening to many of these buildings for 40 some years. This building was built in 1981. They have a sister property that was built at the same time, the same style by the same designer. Um, and so that building is the one where some of the residents have evacuated, but also um, they did an audit of that building and said that they didn't see any structural issues. That may not be enough. So there are a lot of concerns in this area about all of the buildings aligning the beach, about what will happen next, and if they're safe in any of these buildings. Nadia Romero, thank you so much for us in Surfside this morning.
Breaking overnight, one person shot near Jacksonville University. Officers say it happened on Yellow Pine Court. The victim was taken to the hospital, but he is expected to be okay. Officers say the victim was walking to a nearby business when someone came up and shot him. He is cooperating with police. They believe this is an isolated incident. If you have any information in regards to the shooting, you are asked to contact JSO. 7.05 on your Sunday morning, a beautiful start to the final day of our weekend. And Jen, we were talking about this in the newsroom earlier. I am so excited for today because it's really the first day we're seeing the sunshine in a really long time. It feels like forever. It's been <laughs> cloudy. It's been rainy. And finally, we're seeing the sun this morning. Mark Collins is joining us now. Mark, how long is the sun going to be around? Uh, for some folks, it's going to last much longer than the past couple of days. But we do have some brief showers to talk about. Now, this is mainly along the coastal areas. So if you're going out to do a shopping run, uh, it's going to be brief, so you may go into the store with some rain, come out and it's dry. Likewise, if you're going to church services here over the next 30 minutes, you're going to be caught by some rain if you're watching us right along the beaches. So here's Atlantic Beach, Neptune Beach, Jack's Beach, and we've got this rain that is moving on shore. And already it's leaving the sand as it pushes across the intercoastal waterway. And now it's headed off towards Sandalwood. And you can see the countdown. It'll be in your area in 10 minutes. And this extends up into the Fort Caroline area. So some of this rain is going to be pushing over close to that crash site on the uh, aircraft. So they'll be watching for that, but it's only going to last about 10 minutes. And the good news is that today these rains are not going to stick around. So what we're looking at is maybe a half hour's worth of rain here as we work up along Heckshire Road. This will probably carry over towards Ocean Way there. There you can see um, 295 and 17. There's Main Street and the southern end of Amelia Island. We'll see some rain and this will likely extend up into Fernandina Beach over the next 10 minutes. Quick line pushing through another smaller showers just off the coast of northern St. John's County. This will miss you in St. Augustine and it'll barely wet the pavement around some of the areas in sawgrass. Other than that, you can see how it's dry over the inland zones. And when we take a look outside, you can see the sunshine and almost these tropical low topped showers, similar to what you'd find down across South Florida. That's what we're in splash and dash showers here through the day. So only a 20% chance of rain with temperatures reaching the mid 80s here this afternoon. I'll tell you about a tropical system which is going to come to town here tomorrow when I see you in 10 minutes. Mark, thank you. Lake City Police need your help looking for a missing teen. Take a close look at this picture on your screen. 16 year old Nanette Renaya Nicole Robinson was last seen yesterday morning getting into a white SUV with dark tinted windows. Police do not have any information on the license plate. If you have any idea on where she is, call police at this number 386-752-4343. Covering Nassau County, Kimberly Kessler is expected to be back in court this week for a mental competency evaluation. In May, a psychologist told the judge she is not competent to stand trial. It's the same mental health expert who said Kessler is unable to help in her own trial. Her competency has been brought up numerous times, including after she went on a hunger strike last year. During that time, she weighed 89 pounds. At this time, a trial date is set for mid-August. Kessler is accused of murder in the disappearance of Jolene Cummings. The two were co-workers at a hair salon in Nassau County. We have a boil water advisory out of Clay County. Officials say it is for those in the area of Pine Ridge Parkway. This is west of Creek Bluff Lane. The advisory will be in effect until further notice. Emergency management says there was a water main break. It will be lifted after two consecutive days of improved tests. Officials recommend you turn off anything that automatically draws water. This includes washing machines, dishwashers, and ice makers. The Department of Health will issue 15 new treatment center licenses for medical marijuana. It comes after the state Supreme Court upheld a seed to sale model. Those involved in the industry say the marketplace will almost double in the next 18 months. Jake Stofan says some doubt whether the new players will actually make a dent on cost and availability. 
There are more than 575,000 medical marijuana patients in Florida, and the ever-growing number has opened the door for 15 new MMTC licenses. Once the patient count hits 600,000, a total of 19 licenses will be available. This frankly doubles the size of the industry. Jeff Sharkey with the Medical Marijuana Business Association says he expects those licenses will be granted within 18 months. I think it's going to have a big impact. I mean, you'll see people really becoming competitive in this space. But of the 22 current license holders, nine have produced zero or virtually zero product. Florida's going to be a a wash in medical marijuana licenses. State Senator Jeff Brandis is skeptical more license holders will make a noticeable impact on patients. The problem is Nobody wants to put the capital in to build the facilities and then site the retail facilities and build the processing plants necessary to make this work. With the Supreme Court upholding the state's medical marijuana law, it would take legislative action to undo the expensive but lucrative requirement that MMTCs control every aspect of the process from seed to sale. State Representative Carlos Guillermo Smith hopes it's an issue the legislature will move to address next year. We need more competition because that will drive down the cost of the product for patients. The Department of Health told us it's establishing an application process for the 15 licenses currently available, but it has not yet begun accepting applications. Reporting from the state capitol, I'm Jake Stofan. Soon after taking office in 2019, Governor DeSantis said the vertically integrated medical marijuana system essentially created a cartel. But legislative efforts to abolish the seed to sale model in recent years have failed to gain traction. Covering Alachua County, the commission is helping small farmers and ranchers. The board is offering $10,000 in grants. It's part of a pilot program. Any farm or ranch that makes between $1,000 and a quarter of a million dollars a year is eligible. Requests per farm cannot be more than $5,000. You have until July 30th to apply. And we are following breaking news this morning out of Arlington. We got word of a fatal plane crash. This is according to JFRD. And this is on Monument Road near Craig Airport. We do have a crew on this on their way to the scene right now. We will continue to keep you updated as we learn more. 712 on your Sunday morning. You're watching the morning show on the local station. How you doing, Daddy? <laughs> I need you to help me. You're going to say the words, and I'm going to be mouth enough. Hey, man, those other girls are wet. <laughs> Monday at 3 on Channel 4. Clayton Waycross Home Building Facility is now hiring. Starting pay over $20 an hour. Benefits including a matching 401k. Shifts end at 3.30 daily. No nights or weekends with training provided. Apply today at careers.claytonhomes.com. Can you size my ring? Change my watch battery. Today? Yes. Fast Fix provides on-site jewelry and watch repair services with custom designs, engraving, and more. It might be better to ask what we don't do. Fast Fix, Avenues and St. John's Town Center. Get great values like $650 off exclusive Samsung refrigerators at the home of great appliance brands. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. FirstCoastAccurateDealers.com for attractive offers on the TLX. Garden fresh salad or four homemade soups plus warm breadsticks. Our famous never-ending first course is so good, you'll forget you still have more to look forward to. Enjoy never-ending super salad and breadsticks on us, only at Olive Garden. Here, have a Triscuit. Bring on the zest with fire-roasted tomato and olive oil. Bring it with Triscuit.
I was injured and basically I was ignored by the insurance company. I wanted to know how was I going to move forward. Dealing with fair and fair is just basically being put at ease. I didn't feel alone. I felt like I actually had a partner. Getting off at 3.30 every day, uh, it really helps me. My youngest girl, she does uh, gymnastics. Me being, off, being able to get off at 3.30 every day. The extracurricular activities that my kids do have, I don't miss out on a whole lot of it. You will soon have the opportunity to receive the COVID-19 vaccine at more locations throughout Jacksonville. Duval County Public Schools will open five new vaccination sites. The first site will open tomorrow at Mandarin High School. The second opens Tuesday at Fletcher Middle School. Westside High School will open a clinic on Wednesday. Another site opens its doors at Andrew Jackson High School on July 7th. The last location will open the following day on July 8th at First Coast High School. These sites are opening just two weeks after several of the state-run sites shut down throughout the area. These vaccination clinics are open to anyone 12 and older. If you are younger than 18, you can show up by yourself, but you will need a consent form and a photo ID. The Pacific Northwest is in the middle of a record-breaking heat wave. Heat wave is forecast to bring a high of 106 degrees. Now, for perspective, normally in late June, the region averages roughly 70 degrees as a daily high. That's a big difference from 106. Cities in Oregon and Washington, where the heat wave is most severe, rank the highest in households without air conditioning. Experts blame the extreme heat on the global climate crisis. Climate scientists uh, often say that the right question to ask is how much worse is this because of the climate crisis? Uh, and of course, the answer is, uh, you know, 19 of the 20 hottest years ever measured have been in the last 20 years. Last year was the hottest of all. The last seven have been the hottest of all. Uh, this, is, this is heating up our world in an enormous way. And with the heat wave brings a fourth straight week of level four drought conditions in the area. According to National Integrated Drought Information System, more than 47% of the lower 48 states are in a drought. This is nearly a 10% increase since May. 92 million Americans are affected, up 1.5% compared to last month. Here in Florida, some southern areas are seeing a level zero or abnormally dry drought. The Weather Authority, pinpoint precision with exact track 4D, dissecting storms, exposing dangerous conditions miles above the surface. Well, we were in that abnormally dry level here a couple weeks ago, and clearly that has been erased. And we've had so much rain recently that our average temperatures for the month of June are actually just slightly below normal. Typically, we see an afternoon high of 91 degrees here during the first week of summer, and we stay in the 90s for the rest of the month. However, for the rest of the week, we probably won't even touch 90 degrees because we're going to be in an enhanced rain pattern. Today, though, not so much. Yeah, you can see some sunshine out there, and also here's a shower coming down. This is the one I pointed out a couple minutes ago over the Fort Caroline area, and that's quickly tracking off to the west. So as I look off towards the east, now I'm going to change and look off towards the west, and we're going to see a whole different view of the clear skies over Jacksonville. So this is the downtown perspective looking west, and you can see that those of you over the inland zones, you just don't even have a cloud over you. So you're looking at clear skies, whereas the coastal spots are seeing those clouds and these showers. Eventually during the afternoon, we might see a better chance of rain here along the west side, Normandy, out towards uh, McClenny, but the odds of rain even slimmer than yesterday. It's 73 now. We're going into the lower to mid 80s and on live radar, you can see some of those coastal showers that I pointed out right now. The heaviest is that one that I just showed you on the camera working through Fort Caroline, and this will eventually be pushing into the Arlington. It's over Arlington now pushing over towards the Dames Point Bridge there on 295 and if we extrapolate this further we'll bring this probably back into the downtown area here and we'll get a timing on that as it works into the north side on the north bank P P panama park in 20 minutes will probably come in towards Talleyrand here over the next 10 to 20 minutes as well and then working up towards san mateo 
Other areas have been uh, seeing just some light showers off the coast, and that includes uh, the Palm Valley area where you're going to see a brief shower come through. And right now, a little bit of rain coming down on Butler Boulevard. So if you're watching us and your plans on uh, maybe grabbing some pancakes around the town center, uh, if you want to delay that by 20 minutes, you probably will miss this shower as it moves on past the town center here by about 730 or at least uh, coming th close to that area by 730. Here we are in the lower 70s coastal spots about 77 there in St. Augustine taking the run up into the mid 80s as we head through the afternoon easterly winds with us and they'll be picking up to around 15 possibly a gust to around 20 and today's going to be drier than yesterday so with less cloud cover expected during the afternoon we'll have a higher uv index at an 11 and it will be a pretty good beach day but watch out for a moderate risk for rip current so with this onshore flow you can see how these showers lining up along our coastal areas, then they'll try to push inland during the late afternoon, leaving us fairly dry. But we call this a deep easterly flow. You notice they along the entire Florida coastline, we're seeing the easterly flow, not just at the surface, but aloft. Now tomorrow, this is a weak trough that's going to come on through. Nothing developing tropically out of it. Hurricane Center uh, is only giving it a 20% chance of getting any type of uh, named uh, structure but it will enhance the rain. So here's today's showers pushing on off. And then as we head into the overnight, clouds will build in and tomorrow we'll see our rain chances increase to around 50 to 60%. Today it's warmer over the inland areas around 90 degrees, but here in town we will be left at 86. And tomorrow these showers come on the backside of that trough and it's really gonna target Southern Georgia during the morning and afternoon hours and then around Northeast Florida, primarily during the afternoon. So when we put it all together, I just don't see much of a dry day in store for the upcoming work week. Today will likely be the driest. Take that logo off, Mark. You gotta do that. That was a great Sharks game last night, but the fun is over. Anyways, back into the forecast this week, you see as we head through the next couple of days, maybe a little bit of drier weather along the backside of that tropical low that comes through tomorrow. But then looking ahead next week, each and every day, like Wednesday, Thursday, about a five out of 10 chance of seeing some rain. So definitely uh, we're not dealing with the heat, but we will be dealing with showers each and every day. Jen. Mark, I'll take it. Thank you. Get ready to hear Jacksonville's top singing talent compete for $500 in 4th of July fame. Our annual Oh Say Can You Sing competition is right around the corner. Tune in to Channel 4 Wednesday night at 8 to see our four finalists sing live. They are Kevin, Walker, Antoine, and Kara. They've all been practicing the past two months just to put on this show. You get to pick who wins that $500 prize and the chance to sing the national anthem before the Independence Day fireworks live right here on News for Jacks. Crews are tunneling through debris to look for survivors. Family members are praying for good news. One family in particular is getting a sign. The hopeful sounds they are hearing. And here at home, we are following breaking news this morning out of the Arlington area. Crews are responding to the scene of a plane crash. Jeff RD says this crash is fatal. And this is a live look at the scene right now. It happened near Monument Road. We are learning this happened on a golf course. We have a crew on the scene gathering information and we will check in with them in just a few minutes. Saving the day since 1983. David Gray, electrical, plumbing, heating, and air. Take advantage of the Mazda Season of Discovery sales event now at Hodges Mazda. Nothing down, nothing due at signing. Lease a new 2021 Mazda CX-5 for only $340 a month. Plus, get two years free maintenance. Stop by or shop online at HodgesMazda.com. Paul loves food. Oh, you want to order? But his diabetes made food a mystery. Everything felt like a no. But then Paul went from no to know. With Freestyle Libre 14 Day, now he knows how food affects his glucose. And he knows when to make different choices. Take the mystery out of your glucose levels and lower your A1C. Now you know. Try it for free. Visit FreestyleLibre.us. I lost 52 pounds with WW, and I feel like a brand new person. I have energy for days. 
It is everything I've been working for to be healthy for my future family. Join today with a 14-day free trial. Seat number? This way. Thanks. Um, excuse me. Just get it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Ah, sorry. When it comes to airplane seats, size matters. Same goes for your law firm, Morgan & Morgan. Would you like some peanuts? America's largest injury law firm. Home to great appliance brands like LG and great values like saving up to $750 now on select major appliance purchases. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. After a major storm, you can count on JEA to safely restore power as quickly as possible, beginning with critical infrastructure, hospitals, shelters, and police and fire stations. Next, we put all of our resources into restoring power to neighborhoods and businesses. And we won't stop until every customer's outage is resolved. Because when the community you serve is home, there's more than power on the line. Learn more at do more with JEA.com. Take advantage of the Mazda Season of Discovery sales event now at Hodges Mazda. Nothing down, nothing due at signing. Lease a new 2021 Mazda 6 for only $320 a month. Plus, get two years free maintenance. Stop by or shop online at HodgesMazda.com. 725, we are following breaking news out of Arlington. Crews are on the scene of a fatal plane crash. It happened near Monument Road. News for Jack's reporter Aaron Farrar is live on the scene. And Aaron, we are learning this happened on a golf course. It did, and that happened around 6.30 this morning. We want to show you where we are right now, about half a mile away from that golf course, but behind me is that. It, it's hard to see right now because of the sun and because of the rain right now, but a half a mile away from where we are is where JSO is investigating what led up to that crash. What we know so far, according to JFRD, is one person was killed in that aircraft, and to specify, that kind of aircraft was an ultralight aircraft. That's according to JFRD. We are still working to find out how that person crashed and what led up to that in the first place. Right now, we did see JSO speaking with some of the golfers who were on the course already this morning and some of the staff at that golf club, just talking about what they saw and kind of trying to figure out what are the next steps as this investigation continues. As we learn more information regarding this crash, we'll be sure to let you know on air and online to check out our website, newsforjacks.com. Reporting live in Arlington, I'm Aaron Farrar, Channel 4, the local station. Aaron, thank you. We will continue following this story on air and online throughout the morning. The Jacksonville Sharks are celebrating their first win of the season. The team beat the Albany Empire last night in front of a packed by Star Veterans Memorial Arena. The Sharks were staring down a deficit in the late stages of the second quarter, but Danny Southwick threw a deep ball to tie the game. Jacksonville gained the lead heading into halftime with a last second play. Fast forward to the fourth quarter, the game tied at 52. Southwick finds Devin Wilson in the end zone. The Sharks knocked off the undefeated Empire with a 61 to 58 game. Jacksonville will take on the Carolina Cobras in two weeks. The following week on July 17th, you can catch their game on our sister station, CW17. The contest against the Columbus Lions starts at 7 that night. The Tampa Bay Lightning will drop the puck in game one of the Stanley Cup Finals tomorrow. The team took down the New York Islanders in the semifinals. The Lightning's goaltender recorded two shutouts in that series. Tampa has not lost back-to-back -back games in the postseason. They will take on the Montreal Canadiens for the Cup. It is the first time since 1993 the Habs have been to the finals. The last time a Canadian team battled for the Cup was in 2011. Tampa is looking for its third cup in the last 17 years. Puck drop is tomorrow night at 8. A local speller will try to slide into the finals today. Eric Williams will compete in the semis of the National Spelling Beat tonight. The competition begins at 7 this evening. He will go up against 30 different spellers virtually. This is the last year Williams will be able to compete. If he moves on, he will head to Orlando for the championship on July 8th.
And taking a live look at Tokyo, Japan. Oh, we'll get to that live look in just a little bit. But the Olympics are less than a month away, believe it or not. And another athlete is etching her name among those for Team USA. Back in March, Emily Sisson set a personal best at the Gate River Run, which was the video we were just showing you. She has now set a new Olympic trials record. Sisson took the lead in the fifth lap of the 10,000 meter race. With the win, she will now head to Tokyo. The game starts on July 23rd. And we are a week away from 4th of July. It's hard to believe the year is flying by. Flying by. We're halfway through. It is also the deadline for the goal to have 70% of the nation vaccinated. More doses are getting shipped out. The concerns that's ahead. And we are following breaking news out of Arlington. Crews are responding to the scene of a plane crash. JFRD says this crash is fatal. It happened on Monument Road, and we are learning this happened on a golf course. We do have a crew on the scene gathering information, and we will be checking back in with them in just a few minutes. The Morning Show on Channel 4, number one, nine straight years and counting. By doing journalism that puts you first. Getting answers to what's important to you today. Late breaking updates as we work to get back to normal. Information to help keep your family safe. Alerting you to scams and ripoffs. Time saver traffic gets you there on time. Watching and tracking changes in the weather with Exact Track 4D. The morning show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure, it's wireless. What's your Buick's Wi Fi password? It's uh, Buick Envision. That's a really tight spot. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. The all-new Buick Envision. Built around you. All of you. Current eligible Buick owners get 3200 purchase allowance on 2021 Envision models when you finance through GM Financial. See your local Buick dealer. Hello, I'm Chad Froick. It doesn't matter what the weather conditions are here in Florida. Pests are always looking for a way to get into your home or business. At Florida Pest Control, we offer customer-friendly pest maintenance programs to help keep your home and business pest-free. Our technicians undergo continual training on the latest treatment methods. Contact Florida Pest Control for your free, no-obligation inspection. And remember, the only bugs we can't control are litter bugs. I would definitely say I did not smile at all. I had a lack of confidence. It really made me sad. I think a smile is one of the most important things anyone can have. I really don't think that anybody can do what Dr. David is doing right now. I went in there and in one week I came out with the smile that you see right now. It feels better than my real teeth. I had the all zirconia procedure done. And I had my permanent zirconia teeth. In one week. Home selling with OfferPad is as easy as... Welcome to OfferPad. How can we help? We want to sell our home to buy this one. Cool. Sell to buy. We're ready. Close in 14 days. Okay, we're moving fast. Let's do this. Request your free offer today at OfferPad.com. Right about now, we could all use a pancake. Or 10. So come into IHOP for pancakes, burgers, burritos, and more. Because you deserve something that makes you smile. This guy knows what's up. At Farrah & Farrah, we specialize in accidents involving commercial trucks. Don't let the insurance company play around with your future. Call us. You're watching Channel 4, the local station. Live with Jennifer Reddy, Zachary Lajway, the Weather Authority forecast with Danielle Giuliano, and breaking news with Sky 4. The morning show continues. A South Florida community is holding on to hope this morning. This is the Paramount Miami World Center in downtown Miami. See, on the left there, it is lit up with flags from around the world. The message is one world, one prayer. And Jen, this is the scene inside St. Joseph's Catholic Church. Priests there held vigils for the victims of the Surfside building collapse. As crews continue to search through the rubble for survivors. One family is remaining positive. Their loved ones are alive. Jake Samuelson's grandparents live in apartment 302, right there on your screen. He says after the collapse, his mother's house phone was ringing off the hook. 
it was coming from his grandparents' line inside that condo. But on the other end, just static. The family got 16 calls before going to the reunification center. We're just trying to rationalize what's happening here, and we're just trying to get answers. So many other families like Samuelson's are also looking for family members. Mike Stratton is searching for his wife. He was on the phone with her before the line went dead. He says he is thankful for the first responders and hopes to talk to his wife again soon. Mm. Miami-Dade's mayor says five people are confirmed dead and 156 people are still missing. Ever since the condominium tower collapsed, some say they have been on edge about living in high rises locally. News for Jack's reporter Bree Isom spoke to people downtown about this concern. We've been getting a lot of concerns from people about condos here locally, and I also talked to a psychologist and she tells us ways to ease that anxiety. Yeah, of course, I, you know, I had the what if thought because anxiety is really common. Dr. Lynn Waddleton, a local psychologist, says it's common for people to think the worst, especially after the 12 story beachfront condominium tower in Miami Dade County collapsed early Thursday morning. Dr. Waddleton lives in a condo on the beach herself, and she says she's had anxious thoughts. The problem begins when your brain gets stuck on thinking that a very low probability event actually has a high probability. The news followed word of a 2018 engineering report that showed the Champlain Tower South condo had, quote, major structural damage. This damage was to a concrete slab below its pool deck that needed extensive repairs before it collapsed. It was part of a series of documents released by the city of Surfside. We decided to ask residents of the Strand apartment complex on the river downtown how they felt about living in a high rise after hearing about that condo collapse. Dale Lynn lives on the 15th floor. This always happens in some faraway place, but it looks like it was pretty, uh, a pretty nice building that just collapsed. Lynn says he knows his complex is inspected because management posts notices, but hearing about this caused his family to worry. I honestly think this, the most dangerous thing about this is probably not the um, uh, the fact that buildings are going to fall down, it's that people aren't going to sleep. Dr. Waddleton says if you're still experiencing anxiety two weeks after this, she says it will be good to consult with a mental health expert. In Jacksonville, Bree Isom, Channel 4, the local station. 736 on your Sunday. We're listening to thunder. I know, we can kind of hear the rain coming through. Mark Collins is joining us live. Mark, this isn't going to last too long. I don't think so, Jen. Any particular shower won't last more than about 10 minutes, so they'll be very brief here this morning. Nonetheless, uh, we're seeing mostly coastal showers as they shift inland. And as we zoom in, here's 295 St. John's River, and JU is right there. So we're going to have some of that rain pushing back into JU and then crossing over to Talleyrand. And also, you can see along Alta Drive, very wet, the stretch there over the Dames Point Bridge and into Fort Caroline, but the heaviest chunk of rain is right there and this is going to cross over into the trout river here over the next 10 minutes and here you can see this loop is just going back from 730 now to about 650 so it's a pretty quick moving shower and we'll probably see some of that eventually come into the airport which is right there and then there's Sutel Drive and so we'll probably see some of that rain come through the north side and then as we move further up into Nassau County here you can see St. Mary's you're about ready to see a quick splash and dash shower that one's only going to last about five minutes, so don't count on much rain out of it. And even those of you in Fernandina Beach, when we were talking about this 15 minutes ago, it was off the coastline, and now here it is moving on by. So uh, if you just wait two minutes, you'll be able to get that soggy newspaper out of your yard. Down around St. Augustine, don't count on much rain. There's a little blip here, and it's drying up as it works up towards Volano Beach. And here you can see the skies as we look off towards that shower that I just pointed out there uh, over Fort Caroline. You can see how it looks very black in the base of that cloud, but there's blue skies lining the edge. And that's what we're going to be in for most of the day, blue sky. So a mixture of sun and mostly sunny weather here this afternoon with less rain in the forecast. The odds of rain only around 20%. So I showed you the North Bank camera. This is our South Bank camera looking at that same sun shower. You can see the rain shaft just dropping down over you in Fort Caroline. And this is the one that is just 
working over the Dames Point Bridge right now. Winds are calm. We're going to see an easterly flow and it'll take all the rain along our coastal spots, track it inland, and then we'll have drying conditions during the late afternoon hours. And this easterly flow extends all the way down into South Florida and they're contending with those same brief showers like what we're seeing in our backyard over the Surfside condo. Showers will be west of us this afternoon. The odds of rain about 20% to a drier day and storm will keep temperatures in the low 80s. I'm going to talk about a tropical disturbance just off our coastline when I see you in 10 minutes and why you really don't need to be too concerned about it. Mark, thank you. Five people are dead after a hot air balloon crash in New Mexico. Witnesses say the gondola was on fire when it went down. The balloon hit the top of some electrical wires as it was descending. Three men and two women died. Witnesses did try to use a fire extinguisher to put out the flames. Albuquerque police are grateful for the community members who tried to help. In 26 years, it's one of the scenes I guess that hit me the most uh, because it was just such a beautiful moment that led to uh, such a tragic ending for these individuals involved. More than 13,000 people in the area were without power. The FAA and NTSB are now investigating. Hot air ballooning is a popular recreational activity in Albuquerque. The suspect in a knife attack in Germany will remain in jail after appearing before a judge this weekend. Authorities say a 24-year-old Somali immigrant grabbed a knife from the kitchen section of a store and fatally stabbed three women. Six others were also hurt in the attack. The 24-year-old is facing three murder charges and six counts of attempted murder. Officers searched his home and are investigating those close to him. They also combed through a homeless shelter where he was living. That's where police found his phone and papers filled with hateful messages. His criminal record does not show any signs related to terrorism. Canadian police are investigating fires at two Catholic churches that happened within an hour of one another. The flames at one church spread to nearby brush, but crews were able to contain it. Those are the images on your screen. The fires are the latest in a string of fires at Catholic churches in the area in the last week. Tension mounds as First Nations call on the Catholic Church to respond to the discovery of unmarked graves in Canada. In the last month, more than 700 remains have been found near former residential schools. Those schools were facilitated by the Catholic Diocese. The Vatican has not yet responded. Happening tomorrow, we are expecting to learn more about a Marine Corps recruiting mission happening here in the River City. It has taken place at the Hyatt Regency Jacksonville Hotel over the past six months. The city of Jacksonville says the mission had a major impact on the economy and the hospitality industry as it recovers from the pandemic. The city will also present the Marine Corps with a city council resolution. Covering coronavirus, the month of action is almost over. The president's goal is for 70% of the nation to have received at least one dose of the vaccine. Health officials say right now nearly 65% have gotten at least one shot. Some experts believe the nation will not reach that goal by Independence Day. The U.S. is sending 3 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to Brazil as the country struggles with a surge in cases. Its death toll from the virus is now more than 500,000. Other countries are reporting worsening conditions. Scientists in South Africa say the Delta variant has become a dominant strain. The country is dealing with its third wave. Health ministry officials expect it to surpass the previous variant in terms of infections. As concerns grow over the spread of the Delta variant, the World Health Organization is urging people to continue to wear masks. People need to continue to, to use masks consistently, use, uh, be in ventilated spaces, hand hygiene, uh, respiratory etiquette, everything, the physical distance, avoid crowding. This still continues to be a, a extremely important, even if you're vaccinated, when you have a, a, a community transmission ongoing, which is the case of the Latin America in general. You might recall back in May, the CDC said masks are unnecessary if you are fully vaccinated. However, masks are still required on planes and public transportation. Sweden is getting ready to welcome American tourists back. The country was the first to ban non-essential travel from countries outside the European Union. Officials plan to open its borders starting on Wednesday. Tourists will have to show a negative test two days in advance, 
even if vaccinated. The CDC does classify Sweden as very high risk and is encouraging people to avoid travel to the region. 743, we are following breaking news out of Arlington. Crews are responding to the scene of a plane crash. Jeff RD says this crash is fatal. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is also on scene. It happened on Monument Road. It is unclear how many people were on board, but we are learning this happened on a golf course, as you can see in this live picture here this morning. We have a crew on the scene gathering information, and we will be checking in with them throughout the morning. It is 744. We'll be right back. This weather update is sponsored by Precision Garage Door. Make the right decision. Call Precision. What is that? Woo! When it comes to leaf blowers, size matters. Oh, the leaf king! The leaf king! Yes, 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 yes! Same goes for your law firm. Morgan & Morgan, oh, I'm big. America's largest injury law firm. That was awesome. Getting your air ducts thoroughly cleaned takes the trained professionals at Stanley Steamer using the most powerful equipment to get the most powerful results. Our equipment goes deep inside your ducts, removing years of dirt, pet hair, allergens, even dust mites. Unlike other air duct cleaning companies, Stanley Steamer cleans your entire system. Just look at how much dirt can be removed. Call today for a free inspection and save $50 on a cleaning. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. Look at this closet. I love it. It's time to fall in love with your closet or any room in your house. At Closets by Design, we offer something for everyone at a price for anyone. Let us design a unique space that fits your style and budget. Right now, get 18-month financing, 40% off, plus an extra 15% when you call 904-901-7717 or go online today. It's Mattress Firm's biggest 4th of July sale ever. Hurry in and get a king bed for the price of a queen or a queen for a twin. Plus, get a free adjustable base when you spend just $6.99 on Sealy. Or save $500 on Tempur-Pedic Breeze mattresses and sleep up to 8 degrees cooler. Our sleep experts have over 200 hours of training, and with our low price guarantee, you can rest assured you'll get the best bet at the best price, only at Mattress Firm. Wendy's only serves one kind of breakfast, a better one. So chuck your old soggy egg witch and pick up two of these freshly made sandwiches at Wendy's for just four bucks. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's two for four. The Weather Authority alerts faster than ever with Exact Track 4D. Wednesday, it's the Oh Say Can You Sing finale. This year's show is bigger than ever. It's gonna be a great show tonight. Four singers give their all in the most challenging competition yet. All right, how are we gonna do this? Who will sing the national anthem on the 4th of July? You pick the winner. And the winner is... The Oh Say Can You Sing finale. Wednesday at 8 on Channel 4. Delivered by Papa John's, independently owned and operated. Positively Jacks, a Jacksonville man is riding thousands of miles across the country to raise money for cancer. Greg Taylor will arrive back home next month after more than four months on the road. I spoke with him about his journey as he makes his final trek south. How pretty is this? Day by day. A little downhill into the valley here, ladies and gentlemen. Mile by mile, Greg Taylor is biking his way across the country. Um, the trip has been unbelievable. There's, you know, you try and like put into words everything and uh, just really the magnitude of it that I've been able to see, um, you know, live and uh, it's impossible. Taylor left Jacksonville more than four months ago to ride roughly 11,500 miles, raising money for the cancer nonprofit Chemo Noir. Looks like we're going 6% downhill for 10 miles. His journey taking him through different weather conditions in states all across the U.S., like California, Texas, Montana, and Maine. What has been the biggest challenge so far? The mental side of things. Uh, honestly, I'm at the point now where I, I, 
my body doesn't really get a choice and it's pretty used to what I'm asking it to do. So um, it's being, uh, being able to stay dedicated through some times that weren't so great. But despite this challenge, Taylor has kept going. I really do feel excellent headed home. He has pedaled roughly 10,000 miles so far and only has a few states along the East Coast left to go. Right now we're standing right by the CrossFit gym where you left a few months ago. What has surprised you most since you left on that day? The amount of true, genuine, organic outreach that we've been able to sustain in Jacksonville. Taylor is close to reaching his goal of raising $100,000, a feat he says wouldn't be possible without the community. I'm humbled, to be honest. Uh, there were donations from companies, people, uh, individuals, groups groups, spike groups, uh, uh, you know, anything and everything that you could imagine that I just would have never expected to see. Support for a good cause as he rides mile by mile back home. Related to get back to the River City on July 17th, he is asking anyone who likes to ride to join him on his final leg of the journey from the Mayport Ferry to Southern Swells Brewing. If you want to donate, we have a link on our website, newsforjacks.com. Exact Track 4D, the Weather Authority's secret weapon against severe storms, the most cutting edge weather technology in Northeast Florida and South Georgia. Starting out here early Sunday morning with more humidity, and don't let those early morning showers fool you into thinking it's going to be wet all day. In fact, we're looking at dry conditions here in St. Augustine and even up the coast. The rain that was on Jacksonville Beach that has ended. So we're going to see more and more of the sunshine here today and less rain in the outlook, at least for one day. In fact, here's a snap for Jack's picture that just came in from Glider and Mom and Sunrise over Keystone Heights this morning. Maybe uh, some of you are going out to a uh, glider. Uh, party in the sky. You know, her long field is a popular spot for that, but I would just kind of wait until this passes on by. This is a live look over downtown and you can see the rain shaft coming down over Tally Ran right now. This is leaving the Fort Caroline area, so we're looking off towards the north northeast and it is sweeping towards the west and it's going to eclipse the north side here and eventually that sunshine will come back in over the downtown area but you might even hear the rumble or two of some thunder out there but this is mainly just a shower but as that cumulus cloud tries to build up in the sky we might be able to get up to around uh, 20,000 feet where you could get a clap of uh, thunder coming out of it. This is a look over T little Talbot Island. We'll zoom in a little bit tighter there. If you're going out canoeing there around Amelia Island, uh, this shower is going to be moving away from the island. And in fact, up there towards American Beach and Fernandina, you're already drying out as the cell has been pushed off to your west. But for those of you in O'Neill, Yuley, this is the rain that's coming in right along 200. And eventually this is going to come into the Yuley Heights area here. When? Well, pretty quickly here. So within the next five minutes, that's going to come through here at 819. Backing out the view, let's take you to the home view and show you that for those of you in Duval County, I do think some of this rain will work off towards the northwestern side here. So up by the airport, you'll probably get some rain in your vicinity here pretty soon. And that's the one lone shower that we're tracking as it works off towards Beverly Hills and eventually into Plummer and probably starting to fall apart before it reaches the Highway 301 corridor. Today we're going to have a drier day, a little bit more sunshine, and that means warmer temperatures. Right now we're only at 75, but we'll climb up to about 85 during the afternoon. And you see morning rain chances around 20%. Then they trail off during the afternoon as those spots from around Jacksonville back to the beach will be dry today. Any type of late afternoon showers will be tucked away way out towards the I-75 corridor. So with more sunshine, higher UV index at an 11, maybe a little extra sunscreen. All right, so what's this yellow cone? Well, that just shows the potential path for this tropical disturbance. No high winds in it, but there are some thunderstorms here along the backside, and those thunderstorms will be increasing our rain potential for tomorrow. Very little potential for this to develop into a named system. So this is the rain moving on by tomorrow today. Tomorrow we'll see an increase in showers with this easterly flow. Today we'll reach about 86 here in town, low 90s for tomorrow, and then actually low 90s over the inland zone tomorrow, a little bit cooler because of the rain chances increasing to 60%. So today your drier day, tomorrow a little bit wetter. 
as some of that tropical moisture comes in. And then on Tuesday, we'll see a little bit of a pause in the rain as some drier air slides in as that weak low moves out towards the Gulf of Mexico. And then notice next week, I don't see any real dry days in store for us. At least we're not going to be dealing with the 90 degree heat that we typically see here as we start summer. In fact, we're going to be dealing with below normal temperatures and daytime highs mainly in the mid 80s. And that easterly flow will eventually give way to a more south wind on Thursday, southwest wind Friday. So that means some timing differences in the week with morning showers, primarily the next couple of days and then late afternoon showers next week. All right, we've got much more news coming up. We'll see you coming up right after this. Whether it's time for a new garage door or repairing your current one, Precision is the trusted choice for garage door repair and replacement. Having your garage door solution in every truck. Call Precision today and get a free service call with any repair. Great parties start by recycling the new Ball Aluminum Cup. In about 60 days, the recycled aluminum can return as part of other infinitely recyclable, lightweight yet sturdy cups. Bringing out the best in cold drinks and lifting up any get-together. So enjoy. Reuse just a few times if you like and then recycle the new Ball Aluminum Cup because the party starts here. Find us in your store's disposable section and choose aluminum over plastic. Right now, Rooms to Go can change the way you sleep forever. Just choose your perfect mattress set from our selection of top brands, starting at only $5.99. In the size, comfort, and support you need, and upgrade your foundation to a quality adjustable base for free. If you sleep on a queen size mattress, king size mattress, or even if you prefer a split king, buy the set and switch to a versatile adjustable base for free and enjoy all the benefits. Now at Rooms to Go. Home to great paint and stain brands at great values, like $10 off gallon size cans of HGTV Home by Sherwin Williams. Blows. Home to any budget, home to any possibility. Here, have a Triscuit. Bring on the zest with fire roasted tomato and olive oil. Bring it with Triscuit. Positively Jacks is brought to you by Land Rover Jacksonville. The Bennett's really know how to put their Wi-Fi to work. Whether it's work work. Works for me. School work. It worked. Or a workout. I'm working. They've got Xfinity, which delivers Wi-Fi faster than a gig. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get. It's more than enough to keep everyone working. Can your internet do that? This is work. This is hard. Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi or get started with Xfinity Internet for $25 a month for 12 months. Plus, ask about speed two times faster than AT&T. Switch today. I've been practicing injury law for over 40 years. If there's one thing I've learned, it's this. The more we listen to you, the more we can help. Farah and Farah. Don't be a noisy neighbor. We're a neighborhood nuisance. Let's call Precision Garage Door. Precision is the trusted choice for garage door repair and replacement. If you think it's time for a new door, call Precision today and get up to $200 off your garage door. Okay. Baby's cold. When it comes to blankets, Thank you. size matters. Mm -hmm. Same goes for your law firm. Hmm. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide our skin, not us. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. And for kids ages six and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Hide my skin, not me. By helping to control eczema with Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin. 
a breakthrough eczema treatment. I started losing my teeth in my early 40s, and it was really difficult for me. It's almost as if someone has taken the joy and just turned it off. I don't think anyone can do what Dr. David has done. This procedure has definitely changed my life. I'm not afraid to smile anymore. It makes me feel like Reggie again. I went in there, and in one week, I came out with the smile that you see right now. Get more out of summer with savings on appliances for every function, style, and finish during the Home Depot's 4th of July savings. Save on appliances like this Samsung Kitchen Suite. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. How can you get the COVID-19 vaccine when it's your turn? It's very, very tricky. We're teaming up with Vaccine Hunter to reveal inside secrets for snagging a slot for your shot. Monday at 10 on Channel 4. We are following a fatal plane crash in Arlington. We will have a live report coming up at 8 o'clock right after the break. Hello, I'm Chad Froick. Whether it's your home or business, pests are unwanted guests. At Florida Pest Control, our technicians undergo extensive training by our staff of graduate entomologists. For 70 years, convenient, personalized service is our priority when it comes to controlling pests in our home or business. Call us today for a free inspection and estimate. And remember, the only bugs that we can't control are litter bugs. We have big rolls of carpet, hardwood too, laminates, hot air rocks for you. At the Carpet Man, at the Carpet Man. Our prices are low, 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 low. At the Carpet Man, at the Carpet Man. Don't delay, we'll put it in next day. At the Carpet Man, at the Carpet Man. Y'all them see snap, you hear? At the Carpet Man, at the Carpet Man. Visit one of our mega flooring stores or go to carpetman.biz. It's your guardian angel. It's your muse. It's your smart dress, tech and tent, safety obsessed superhero. The Hyundai Sonata and Elantra. Hey, it's your journey. Own it. Now get 0% APR plus a thousand bonus cash on the Elantra or Sonata or up to 2,500 in savings. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Marine 4 on News 4 Jacks Channel 4, the local station. The morning show starts right now with a breaking news alert. We are following a breaking news alert in the East Arlington area this morning after an ultralight aircraft crashed on a golf course near Monument Road. News for Jack's reporter Aaron Farrar joins us live from near the crash site. Aaron, JFRD confirms at least one person has died. That is correct. And that's from JFRD. JFRD to confirm the one person operating that ultralight aircraft did die in the crash. And that crash happened on the course here at the Blue Sky Country Club. A, a golf club, I should mention. One thing we want to show you is further down, about a quarter mile from where we are, you would see JSO talking with some of the golfers and the staff here on the course about what they potentially saw, what may have happened at around 6.30 this morning when that call came in of the crash. We're working to find out what led up to the crash. Even though the Craig Air Center is here, we don't know if that person was heading and trying to land at the, air, uh, at the airport or where that person was going. We're also learning from JSO of what led up to that crash. Uh, information is very limited at this point, but that investigation will continue throughout the course of this morning and throughout the course of the day. As more information becomes available, we'll be sure to share that with you both on air and online on our website, newsforjax.com. Reporting live in Arlington, I'm Aaron Farrar, Channel 4, the local station. Aaron, thank you. Of course, like Aaron just said, we will keep you updated throughout the morning as we learn more both on air and online at newsforjax.com. <clears throat> News for Jax ex aviation expert Ed Booth will be joining us live in just a few moments to break down what goes into this kind of investigation. But first, let's bring in meteorologist Mark Collins. And Mark, we do know that when this crash happened this morning, we were seeing some rain in the area. Well, not exactly. So the rain came in about an hour after. So the plane, if it went down at 630, the rain was not there. It was uh, back here over the Atlantic. So <clears throat> this is 630. You can see dry conditions. If the ultralight uh, went down at 630, <clears throat> that means that 
It was going up just three minutes after sunrise. Ultra lights are typically not instrument rated, so they're not really designed to fly at night. So it would have been twilight, but there would have been enough light for the plane to take off. Now there was some mist and light fog being reported on the METAR site at Craig Field. What that is is an instrument that was measuring about one and three quarter mile visibility. So it wasn't dense fog. It wasn't even really fog. It was just kind of a low cloud. And during the late night hours at four o'clock, there was a hundredth of an inch of rain that fell in the rain gauge. So that is very light rain and it probably didn't even cause much in the way of puddling or wet uh, runways. So to blame that on radar, probably not likely, but here you can see the rain that did come through after investigators were down there on the site. So that was problematic for just folks trying to recover some wreckage there and assess the situation. At least that rain has moved on by backing out the view. I don't see any more rain coming into that area. There is one little small blip of a shower here just off the coastline of Hannah Park, but uh, that will be quite brief. So on to the forecast now and as we track the rain that has left the Fort Caroline area spilling back into Arlington and the north side. And here you can see it coming down over Garden City. The airport's getting wet right now. And eventually this will be crossing the US-1 corridor and weakening as it approaches Highway 301. For those folks in the Spalding area, you could see this rain come through your vicinity and eventually reach over towards Verde after 8.30 here this morning. So as far as the rest of us go, that's uh, Duval County taking a bigger look at the perspective. Uh, you can see most of the rain extends across Camden County, cuts off into Glen, so you're not getting much there in Brunswick. And the, uh, those of you in our southern zones are looking at dry weather as well. And finally, let's just zoom in on St. Mary's because I want to cover this little shower here. This could actually move back towards Folkestone as it uh, clears past St. Mary's, leaving the beaches there and moves from Kingsland over towards Kings Ferry and eventually might reach you in Hilliard and possibly down towards Folkestone. All right, so the rest of our forecast, drier weather, only a 20% chance of rain. So that's a change, right? We won't be seeing those heavy downpours this afternoon. So good weather to be out at the beach. I'll talk about a tropical disturbance right off our coastline. Why, why aren't I highlighting it more? Well, it's not too much of a worry. I'll tell you more about that in 10 minutes. Great insight, Mark. Thank you. Right now at 8, search and rescue efforts grow as crews continue searching for 156 people still missing after a catastrophic building collapse near Miami. This is a look from Surfside this morning. Early this morning, an Israeli team arrived in Florida. They will help response and recovery efforts. Officials confirm at least five people have died. We're also learning the identities of the tenants killed in the collapse. They include 54-year-old Stacy Fang, 83-year-old Antonio Lozano, his wife, 79-year-old Gladys, and 54-year-old Manuel LaFont. Officials are relying on DNA testing to identify human remains found within the rubble. The Miami-Dade mayor says family members of the unaccounted for have all provided DNA samples. Although we're burdened with such despair, we're burdened with heavy hearts at the moment, we're lifted up by a lot of the faith of the miracles that God can create. Loved ones holding on to hope. When Mike Norega heard that part of the condominium tower where his grandmother lived had collapsed, he rushed with his father to the scene. But when they arrived, while they found no sign of 92-year-old Hilda Norega, in the debris they found an old picture of her and a birthday card delivered just two weeks earlier. Uh, I just feel like it's really God's way of comforting us to say, either way, whatever happened with your grandmother, she's okay. As crews make progress, going in groups of 10 to 12 to tunnel through the debris. Currently, we're searching the entire uh, debris field. A half dozen scientists and engineers who specialize in disastrous structure failures are headed to South Florida to collect firsthand information on the cause of the catastrophic collapse. The first two members of the team arrived Friday and four more will be there by tomorrow. We are going to do a very deep dive into why this building fell down. A report on the building from 2018 included concerns about structural damage. A consultant said failure to replace the waterproofing in the near future will cause the extent of the concrete deterioration to expand exponentially. 
Morabito Consultants, who issued the report, says they are deeply troubled by this building collapse, and they are working closely with the investigating authorities to understand why the structure failed. The team will collect information over the next week to decide whether a more thorough investigation is warranted. The mayor of Miami-Dade says they are working on accommodating requests from family members to visit, pray, and reflect at the site. He's also working on a plan to temporarily relocate residents of a condominium tower built by the same developer of the nearby building that collapsed earlier this week. If you decide to donate to victims of this tragedy, make sure you are giving your money to reputable funds. Do your research to make sure the money is going to victims and not scammers. FEMA officials say two main funds have been launched to help victims of this tragedy. They're called Support Surfside and the Surfside Building Collapse Victim Fund. Here at home in Jacksonville, we are following breaking news out of University Park. JSO is investigating an early morning shooting near Justina Road Elementary School. Police say a man walking to a store on Yellow Pine Court was shot. Investigators believe the victim was targeted. The man was taken to the hospital. He is expected to be okay. Anyone with any information is asked to call JSO. Right now, Lake City Police need your help looking for a missing teenager. Take a close look at this photo on your screen. 16-year-old Renaya Nicole Robinson was last seen Saturday morning getting into a white SUV with dark tinted windows. Police do not have information on the license plate. If you have any information on where this teenager could be, you're asked to call police at 386-752-4343. Bad news for fans of water parks. Today is the final day for adventure landing on the west side. Travato Development Group, which owns the park and another adventure landing at Jacksonville Beach, has filed for bankruptcy. The Jacksonville Beach location is also slated to close by fall. I was out there last night. It was packed. Adventure Landing also operates a third park on State Road 16 near the St. Augustine Outlets. The owner says there are no plans at this time to close that location. Several new laws take effect in Florida this week. Still ahead, the law aimed at saving lives. Plus, a new tax holiday set to save you money on fun things like movie tickets and a new kayak. Ah, oh, sounds like a lot of fun. 8-11 on your Sunday. We're back right after this. What's up, Jacksville? Doc Tony. Did you know that if you are involved and injured in a car accident in the state of Florida, you have 14 days to see a doctor or lose your insurance benefits? That's 14 days to see a doctor or lose the benefits to protect and cover you should you be injured in a car accident. 14 days, Jacksonville. After 911, call the doctor you can trust. That's me, Doc Tony, at 1-800-DOC-TONY. I'm more than a catchy number. I'm real. Why is our service department open seven days a week? Because we are in the customer service business. The first truck we bought here was called The Price. The other two we called the customer service. The one thing I've learned coming to Keith Pearson Toyota is you can enjoy buying and servicing your vehicle. A great experience, a lifetime warranty, five years of maintenance, where else can you get that? Come to Keith Pearson Toyota, Jacksonville's hometown superstore, for a reason. Look at this closet. I love it. It's time to fall in love with your closet or any room in your house. At Closets by Design, we offer something for everyone at a price for anyone. Let us design a unique space that fits your style and budget. Right now, get 18-month financing, 40% off, plus an extra 15% when you call 904-901-7717 or go online today. Home to great appliance brands like LG and great values like saving up to $750 now on select major appliance purchases. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. Wendy's only serves one kind of breakfast, a better one. So chuck your old soggy egg witch and pick up two of these freshly made sandwiches at Wendy's for just four bucks. Choose wisely, choose Wendy's two for four. When you're injured, many times the insurance company tries to pay you less than you deserve, hoping more than anything that you hire the wrong law firm. Here's all you need to know. All law firms are not the same. There's only one Morgan & Morgan for the people. Next, ET. Crank it all the way up. 
Vin Diesel, Charlize Theron, we're with the F9 stars celebrating their blockbuster success. <laughs> Next ET. Monday at 7 on Channel 4, the local station. 813, we are following breaking news right now. A closer look at the scene of a deadly crash on a golf course near Monument Road. This is a new angle just into the newsroom showing the ultralight aircraft that went down at around 6.30 this morning. Joining us this morning is News for Jack's aviation expert, Ed Booth. Thank you so much for coming morning, on the show Zach. under such here. short notice. Uh, we are getting word that this is an ultralight aircraft. What is that and how is that different from a plane? An ultralight aircraft is a totally unregulated part of aviation. An ultralight aircraft can only have one seat. It has to weigh less than 254 pounds empty, cannot carry more than five gallons of fuel, cannot fly faster than about 64 miles an hour. No training, no licensing, no medical certification for the pilots. It's a fringe area of aviation. They're not supposed to be flown over populated areas. I don't know why it was uh, operating adjacent to Craig Airport. Well, it certainly wasn't with permission of the control tower. I was just gonna ask you that. We know this location is very close to Craig Airport. With that said, knowing that information, it's, it's hard to understand why or where this plane came from, especially so close to that airport. They don't need much uh, room to operate, a couple hundred feet maybe. Uh, it likely took off from the airport, from the golf course and crashed on the golf course. So take, it took off from the golf course Perhaps. In, in all likelihood. Okay. That would Not be the guess. airport. Not the airport. Not the airport. Uh, for perspective, Ed, how we're getting a, a, a live look at that aircraft there. It does appear for to not be very big. For perspective, how large I know you were you were giving dimensions 254 pounds. Wingspan. Wing, you and I are about span, what, six feet apart right now? wingspan of maybe 16, 17 feet. Uh, steel tube frame, aluminum frame covered by a Dacron fabric similar to sailcloth, mm. powered by a, an engine similar to what you would see on lawn equipment, a chainsaw engine, that sort of thing. And again, no training, no, no certification. No training required, no FAA oversight. The FAA will come in and note that this accident occurred, mm. but I suspect the investigation will be left up to local law enforcement authorities. Okay, and we know right now JFRD is on scene along with JSO. We, of course, will continue to follow this throughout the morning. We know weather moved through the area uh, early this morning and around the time this uh, incident happened. Of course, weather will probably be uh, looked at, examined, if at all, uh, it, it could be. They're not. They're not known to be uh, flyable in high wind conditions. Yeah, but, uh, weather would not be good. With that, we're going to toss things over to meteorologist Mark Collins. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Zach. Well, probably weather was not a factor in this morning since the rain came after the crash and the rain continues ongoing. The winds have been calm all morning long, so uh, we'll just have to see what the investigators find with that. So we're zoomed in across southern Georgia. So right here is the King sub base. And here you can see this is basically uh, Highway 17, Kingsland, and we've really kind of zoomed in on some of the mobile home parts, which, which are going to see some showers that are com coming in across uh, Camden County. And as this works off towards the west, here you can see a new update. It's going to continue to push into some of our southern Zor Georgia areas here. And, um, well, it's basically going to be wet there in Georgia. Let me just kind of zoom this out here with the controls on my desktop and uh, hard to see, right? That might make it a little bit easier. There's 95. Now I can even see where Kingsland is because it's coming over you. So there's Georgia Highway 40 and here's an even better perspective showing how all that rain is north of Jacksonville and right there over the St. Mary's River. So it's leaving you in Yulee and we're not seeing much rain left here along the beaches. So we had some brief showers. Didn't last more than about 10 minutes along Jack's Beach, Neptune Beach, but the sunshine's coming back. And even that rain that was over Craig Field is gone. And that is all that's left of it, working off towards Plummer and really just kind of falling apart there along US-1. 
The rest of us in our southern zones, well, we had a brief shower around the Bay Meadows area. That's gone. St. Augustine, you're in the clear. And today we're off to a much drier day here across the first coast as the sunshine is in as we take a look out over Clay County. And that is going to bring us some warmer temperatures today and the odds of rain just 20%. Right now we're in the mid 70s. We'll work into the low to mid 80s later in the day. And the snap for Jack's pictures are already flooding in from Scott and Kate. Take a look at this lovely view of the sun coming over the silver lining of the cumulus cloud there. I'd love to see those pictures on your News for Jack's weather app. You can just push the storm pins button, which used to be known as storm pins. Now it's snap for Jack's and the pictures just flood right into our computer systems. 80 degrees already in St. Augustine, warming up into the mid 80s here this afternoon. The chance for rain very slim this afternoon. Clouds fill in this evening and then tomorrow we'll see a better chance of rain. We're going to keep high temperatures right around that 86 degree mark here today. And this is the potential path for a tropical disturbance, one that won't even barely register on your radar because you won't notice much difference from what we had yesterday to what we'll have on Monday because this system will be right over us on Monday. There are some thunderstorms flaring up on the backside, so we will see an increase in rain tomorrow afternoon, especially in this zone from Jacksonville up to Savannah. So let's play out the forecast, and you can see how we're in the easterly flow today with some sunshine here. And as this trough, as we call it, it's basically where winds converge and bow up and around. We're going to see our winds turn from the east today to the northeast tomorrow and then an enhancement of the rain coming in as the tropical wave, you could kind of call it, brings us a boost in the rain to about 60% for tomorrow. Today, 20%. Tomorrow, higher up to 60%. Today, I don't think you're going to see much rain during the afternoon. Maybe uh, as we head towards that 2 and 3 o'clock time frame, areas from around Highway 301 back towards I-75 could see some brief showers. Tomorrow, though, we'll better chance of rain with that tropical moisture. Then a pause again into Tuesday. And then rich Humid air will lead to scattered showers as we head through the next couple of weeks, I should say, because, yeah, it's summertime, and that just means temperatures near 90 degrees and afternoon storms each and every afternoon. Jen. Mark, thank you. Starting this Thursday, several new laws will take effect here in Florida. They include a requirement for all Florida high schoolers to learn CPR and first aid, a requirement for the State Board of Education to create a survey about whether competing ideas and perspectives are presented in the classroom, and if students feel free to express their beliefs, and a law requiring the Department of Health to establish a telehealth minority maternity care pilot program here in Duval County. This pilot program is also starting in Orange County. And Jen, also starting this Thursday, it's the start of Florida's new week-long tax-free holiday, dubbed Freedom Week. From July 1st through July 7th, you can shop tax-free on just about anything entertainment, from trips to movies to outdoor equipment. Here's a little of what's included. Gym memberships, tickets to concerts, to sporting events, new fishing rods, bikes, grills, insect repellent, water skis, surfboards, and kayaks all tax free. The goal is to help you get out and get active. But there's a catch. Just like Florida's tax holiday on school supplies and disaster supplies, there are limitations. Each item can only cost so much. So if you are buying in bulk, you might not get your items entirely tax free. Tickets are also limited to this year, so you can't look ahead and buy tickets for a concert next year for a list of items and exclusions. Look for this story on newsforjacks.com. A rough start to the Tour de France after a crash causes a domino effect of falling riders. Up next, the actions of a spectator now being blamed for the pileup. And right now, looking live from the scene of a deadly aircraft crash near Monument Road, we are learning this is an ultralight aircraft. You can see it right here on your screen. This happened on a golf course. We are learning one person was on board. We will continue to follow this story throughout the morning on air and online and bring you updates as we learn them. 823, we'll be right back. Your craving has met its match. The barbecue boss from Crystal is here. Saucy pulled pork and a tangy pickle on our signature steamy bun. Should you try the new barbecue boss? Yes. Limited time only.
our members shop a little differently. So we reward every purchase. Yeah. Let's see what Kate sent. For you, for all of us. That's for me. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Stanley Steamer, we love homes. It's why we started cleaning them over 70 years ago and why we still continue today. According to the CDC, cleaning is a necessary first step of any disinfection process. We use detergents and cleaning agents to ensure that your home is prepared for whatever life brings in. Whatever home means to you, we're ready when you are to make sure your space is clean and that you and the ones you care about most are safe. When a craving strikes, there's only one savory superhero to save the day. The new Barbecue Boss from Crystal. Saucy pulled pork and a tangy pickle on our signature steamy bun. Try it today before it goes up, up and away. Athletes competing in the Tour de France may be feeling a little sore this morning after a massive crash during the first stage this weekend. I saw this. This is insane. It wasn't the twists and turns of the road that caught the group off guard. A fan got a little too close. Take a look. Right there. Boom. Ooh. And look at the domino effect. Sad to see, you know, these people train so long and so hard for this. There should be some sort of fine or, you know, some sort of penalty for fans to, to get this close. It was massive, as you can see, the group and the domino effect. Mm. Uh, it took down much of the team. Everyone except for one rider was able to shake it off. One member of Team DSM was forced to withdraw from the race with a wrist injury. It's tough to hear. Officials say a fan holding a cardboard sign is what caused the crash. Thankfully, nobody was too seriously Ugh. hurt. Tesla is recalling nearly 300,000 cars because of a safety risk that could cause the vehicle to accidentally accelerate. Still ahead, the quick fix the company is proposing so customers don't even need to go to the dealership. Wednesday, it's the Oh Say Can You Sing finale. This year's show is bigger than ever. It's gonna be a great show tonight. Four singers give their all in the most challenging competition yet. All right, how are we gonna do this? Who will sing the national anthem on the 4th of July? You pick the winner. And the winner is... The Oh Say Can You Sing finale. Wednesday at 8 on Channel 4. Delivered by Papa John's. Independently owned and operated. I had one goal after my brother Tim's accident. Build an injury firm my own family would hire. As America's largest injury firm, there is no firm I would ever hire but ours. Reputation matters. Results matter. There's only one Morgan & Morgan for the people. All right, what well, makes me smile? Here I am, 37 pounds down and feeling great. WW has really helped me adapt a better way of eating. It just motivates me to just keep going. Join today for 60% off. Hurry, offer ends June 28th. My generator from Generator Supercenter is a great investment for my house. A power transformer blew in the subdivision and all my lights were on, everything in my house was working. There's two or three other neighbors that are putting in their generators now because of mine. It's a great peace of mind knowing that when power goes out, it's not going to affect us at all. Get peace of mind with a Generac Automatic Standby Generator with solutions starting at $125 per month. Only at Generator Supercenter, the nation's number one Generac generator dealer. This is James. Jimmy! Mom. Dad. This is James. 
James? James Harrison from Roosevelt High? Jimmy! Yeah, yeah. oh. Good, Jimmy? The 2021 Toyota RAV4. Jimmy! The RAV for all of you. Right now, lease a new 2021 Toyota RAV4 LE for just $249 a month for 36 months. Toyota, let's go places. The great thing about Stainmaster Carpet oh, is... I love you. I love you so much. Oh, I love you. Well, the great thing about Stainmaster Carpet is it's really durable and it's really soft. Oh, I love you. I guess we'll take it. You'll love your carpet, too, if you come see The Carpet Man, where you can get long-lasting and soft Stainmaster Carpet for 99 cents per square foot. The first step to a beautiful home is a visit to The Carpet Man. Stop by or visit carpetman.biz. Harold & Harrell is committed to our clients and to this community. We live here in Jacksonville, and we are proud to sponsor closed captioning. Harold and Harold, we're with you. The morning show starts right now with a breaking news alert. Right now at 830, we are following breaking news out of Arlington. The pilot of an ultralight aircraft has died. The crash happened on a golf course near Monument Road. News for Jack's reporter Aaron Farrar joins us live from this, the crash site right near there. Aaron, you are getting a closer look at the scene. I am. We are right near the Blue Sky Country Club, uh, near the course where that crash happened. Right behind me, you can see a detectives uh, right now observing the crash. That is the ultralight uh, aircraft that we mentioned, single person aircraft that did crash around 6.30 this morning. That's according to JFRD. The pilot was killed in that crash. As you see, about four or five investigators there observing uh, some of the different angles of the aircraft. Also over to the right, you see JSO speaking with several uh, golfers who are already here at the course even when we got here this morning a little bit after that crash asking them what they saw what they may have heard when this crash happened uh, as well right now JSO is leading this investigation and, and determining what led up to this pilot crashing um, the ultralight and end up being killed in this crash as we learn more information about this over the course of the day we will let you know both on air and online Reporting live in Arlington, I'm Aaron Ferrar, Channel 4, the local station. Aaron, thank you. Uh, right now, we're going to slow things down, get a check of the forecast. I know today is the day many of us have been waiting for. The sun is back. Yeah, let's bring in meteorologist Mark Collins to share the good news. Mark, how long is this sun sticking around? I think all day long, Jen. We are definitely seeing a change to some drier weather here today. Now, I know those of you that had some rain here recently, you're thinking, what's the dry air? But as we zoom in, there's not much rain left around the St. Mary's River. Earlier, we had some rain along the beaches. That's over with. And this is a cluster, a batch of rain over Kingsland. And this is going to be tracking towards the west and we weakening a bit as it does so, but it might hold together just enough to come into some of these communities off to our west. If I get this map to cooperate, put a track on it, ah, forget it. <laughs> you know what? It's moving off towards the west and uh, we're going to be seeing some of this rain around the Jacksonville area uh, tomorrow. So basically things have settled down here and uh, let me just go to the keyboard and stick to what I'm used to doing and showing you some real good accurate weather here with clear skies for the most part as the rain has moved on out of the area and forecasting temperatures to reach the mid 80s. Only a 20% chance of rain. That's a deviation from yesterday's higher odds of rain. But notice this twirl out in the Atlantic, a tropical disturbance. How is that going to affect our weather? Well, we'll give us a boost in temperature, a boost in rain for tomorrow. And if you see any interesting photos, snap for Jacks on your News for Jacks weather app. You can send that to us like Lisa did this morning of those clouds in Neptune Beach. All right, so your backyard forecast looks dry here this afternoon. We're going to keep those temperatures running about 80 degrees. Just a small chance for rain, mainly west of Highway 301 after 2 o'clock today. Deeper into the forecast we go in 10 minutes. I'll see you then. Mark, thank you. Just into the newsroom, former U.S. Senator Mike Gravel has died. The Alaska representative read the Pentagon Papers into the congressional record. It was the 7,000-page leaked document discussing the country's early involvement in Vietnam. Gravel ran for president twice, including a try at the 2008 and 2020 elections. Gravel was 91 years old. Also just into the newsroom, 
We are learning there will be a news conference at 11 o'clock this morning in Surfside. The latest on the condo collapse. Additional search and rescue teams arrived overnight. The search for 156 missing people is entering day four. The death toll from the collapse is now at five people. Police identified four of the people who died in the collapse. They are 54 year old Stacy Fang, 83 year old Antonio Lozano, nine, 79 year old Gladys Lozano and 54 year old Manuel Lafort. Reporter Annalise Garcia is live in Surfside this morning where rescue efforts continue. Day four out here in Surfside, and this is still very much a search and rescue mission. Still over 150 people unaccounted for. Now, right now we are at the home base at the command center. Take a look. You can see all the law enforcement here, several local departments. The assistance in this mission to find people in the rubble has expanded to an international level. FEMA is also on site. The work these first responders are doing out here, I mean, it's delicate, it's deep. They are using all different types of machinery out here, heavy machinery to delayer that pile. These crews have been also fighting some stubborn fires that have been an obstacle in this search, but last we heard they had them under control. The canines out here, some are to sniff life and others to sniff death. Now the confirmed death toll now sits at five. Four of the people killed when Champlain Tower South went down. The other person died on the way to the hospital. Now the families of all these people unaccounted for, I mean, they're waiting for any news, good or bad. And right now they feel helpless, but they are getting updates every four hours. Back to you. More than 7,000 service members have died during military operations since 9-11. While suicides among veterans and active duty personnel of those conflicts have passed that number more than four times over. That's 30,000 deaths. The data highlights the divide between the dangers posed by war and a persistent mental health crisis among our nation's heroes. According to a new report from Boston University, the factors of this increase include the trauma of being in combat, the use of improvised explosive devices or IEDs in battle, sexual assault during service, and easier access to firearms. Many of these soldiers also suffer PTSD when they return home. Ahead at 840, a local veteran joins us to talk about the resources available to veterans struggling with PTSD and his struggle after returning home from combat. If you or someone you know may be considering suicide, contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The number is on your screen right now, 1-800-273-8255. Promising to stay out of the opioid business, Johnson & Johnson has reached a deal with the state of New York over its part in the opioid crisis. The company will pay more than $230 million. The money will go to education and addiction treatment programs. According to the CDC, more than 800,000 Americans live uh, lives excuse me, have been claimed in the last 20 years because of the opioid crisis. The settlement comes at a time when the opioid industry is facing more than 3,000 lawsuits across the nation for its contribution to the epidemic. We're following a recall alert this morning. Tesla drivers, listen up. It's a warning for you about a safety risk concerning the vehicle's cruise control feature. Nearly 285,000 vehicles made in China are affected. The cruise control system in certain models can be activated when drivers try to shift gears or accidentally touch the gear selector, resulting in accidental acceleration. Customers will not be required to return the vehicles. Instead, they will receive a free software update remotely or in person to resolve the issue. PTSD affects close to 15% of our nation's veterans, but there is help out there. Up next, local resources for veterans and the benefits one of our local heroes has seen after getting a service dog. But first, as we head to break, it's time to say hello to our fan of the day. Congratulations, Charlotte. We appreciate you, Charlotte. Maybe you visit us on the web or on air at newsforjacks.com or again on television. If you want to be tomorrow's fan, we're now collecting submissions on Snapjacks, but you must be part of our News for Jacks Insider, our free club for loyal fans to share these photos. Share your submissions by going to newsforjacks.com slash snapjacks and select fan of the day from the drop down menu. Looking live right now from the scene of a deadly aircraft crash near Monument Road. We are learning this is an ultralight aircraft. One person was on board.
We will have the latest within the next few minutes right here on News for Jax. 8.38 on your Sunday. You're watching the morning show on the local station. This weather update is sponsored by Precision Garage Door. Make the right decision. Call Precision. Let's get ready to sell. A home selling with OfferPad is as easy as... Welcome to OfferPad. How can we help? List with Flex and get our house ready to show. Ooh, that's home listing with muscle. House updates to help us sell for more. Sure, Reno Advance. Our team is on it. When we're through, this place is going to look amazing. You know, I have this feeling. It's never wrong. Any way you want to sell, you're sold with OfferPad. Start your free sales request at OfferPad.com today. When the Spanish explorers discovered Isla Morada, they called it Purple Isles. Today, they discover such a rich palette of diversions and delicacies. They'd definitely be at a loss for words. Isla Morada in the Florida Keys. It's a fact. More people die from medical malpractice than in car accidents. If you suspect a doctor or a hospital is to blame for an injury, call Farrah and Farrah. We specialize in these types of cases. Farrah and Farrah, here for you, here for good. Home to great paint and stain brands at great values, like $10 off gallon size cans at HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. Why is our service department open seven days a week? Because we are in the customer service business. The first truck we bought here was called The Price. The other two we called The Customer Service. The one thing I've learned coming to Keith Pearson Toyota is you can enjoy buying and servicing your vehicle. A great experience, a lifetime warranty, five years of maintenance. Where else can you get that? Come to Keith Pearson Toyota. Jacksonville's hometown superstore. For a reason. The Morning Show on Channel 4, number one, nine straight years and counting. Every morning, see just how many local stories cover news that impact your family. Watching and tracking the changes in the weather so you can plan your day. Getting you around tie-ups of time saver traffic. Getting you ready for the day ahead. Saving you money and alerting you to scams and ripoffs with Consumer Reports. You just got to see it. We'll get your day started right. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. 841, welcome back. Today is PTSD Awareness Day. According to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, somewhere between 10 to 15 percent of veterans have a clinical diagnosis for PTSD. Joining me now is Navy veteran John Tappan. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. And as a veteran, what has your experience been like with PTSD stemming from your military service? I think first and foremost, it's it's a lack of being able to have what most people consider a normal life. So being able to go to places and function in crowded spots, going to the grocery store, um, things that would just be considered normal activity, I think is something that you, you almost live in this constant fear and, and the nightmares and things like that. I, it, it Things that just people just don't want to talk about. And it's certainly not comfortable, but I... I I know that I'm not the only one, and, and I know that um, talking about it certainly helped. So, And there are many resources out there to help, help both active military and veterans cope with their symptoms of PTSD. What are some things that have helped you personally? Well, I think first and foremost, Canines for Warriors uh, really stepped it up. Uh, as far as I've just been so blessed to be a part of this program, to be a part of um, you know, the group, it's a, it's a family, but I mean, there, there are so many different organizations out there. The thing is, again, I, I just encourage people to, to talk, um, to get out there and say something because you're not, you're not the only one suffering. And I think that's the, the hardest part for us, um, is that you, we wait too long and then it gets, it, it festers and, and becomes something bigger than it really has to be. So just get out there, you know, look online, go talk to a local resource, um, something, just do something because, you know, suffering in silence does no, no good for anybody. And John, we can see a dog with you here this morning. How does your service dog help mitigate your symptoms of PTSD? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> as you can tell, I, I, I didn't smile this much. 
uh, prior to him. Um, he just, it gives me, like I was talking about earlier, the, the feeling of a normal life again. Um, being able to go to the grocery store and not being in fear. Uh, being able to just go out in a public place, go for a walk and have people come around and not feel that angst um, and that panic. Uh, it, it's wonderful. It's like, it's, it's a newly sown life. I couldn't be happier. And elaborating a little more about that, are there certain things that you've been able to resume participating in after being paired with your service dog? I, I mean, it, it's, <laughs> to elaborate, I would say um, the ability to go to the gym. Um, I, I, I know that might not seem like a big thing, but, you know, it's it's the fear of just people in general. It's, it's the, the not knowing, um, the uh just the, the feeling of just not being able to connect. You don't feel like you're, you feel very alone. And um, I think that, you know, any kind of situation where I'm, we're going to try to go to Disney world and, and do that. I, I would have never been able to do that before. Um, I think just concerts, uh, things that just, I never even put on my, my spectrum or think thought I could do anymore uh, are things that I'm planning to do or I'm going to do. So. And for people who are experiencing PTSD symptoms or maybe having a difficult time, how can they go about applying for a service dog? Well, uh, the easiest way is to go to canineforwarriors.org. Uh, it's super simple. Um, it's, it's right on the website. It should be right there. Uh, apply now. Uh, also, if maybe you're not into having a service dog, but you want to donate and, and help other people like myself, uh, that's also on there. But I think, again, just encourage people to reach out, talk to somebody, tell someone if you're struggling, and, and there's, there's help out there, and, and don't think you're alone. I think that's my biggest piece. John Tappan, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You as well. It is 845. We'll be right back. What are people saying about Zaxby's new signature sandwich? Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Big on social media, big in real life. Only at Zaxby's. Order on your favorite delivery app. Why hide your skin if Dupixent has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. Hi, my skin, not me. By helping to control eczema with Dupixin, you can show more with less eczema. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. Get more out of summer with more from the Home Depot. With ways to save on every idea you have, you can do more for your family traditions and even invent some new ones. With 4th of July savings to help you do even more, we can all make this a summer to remember. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Seat number? This way. Thanks. Um, excuse me, just get it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry. When it comes to airplane seats, size matters. Same goes for your law firm, Morgan & Morgan. Would you like some peanuts? America's largest injury law firm. What's so special about Zaxby's new signature sandwich? Let's talk about the sauce. Ooh! Zax sauce. Zax sauce. Zax sauce. Zax sauce. The sauce is boss. Here's a hint. It's the sauce. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce. Only at Zaxby's. Looking live from the scene of a deadly aircraft crash, the crash happened at Blue Sky Golf Club on Monument Road. We are learning this is an ultralight aircraft. Our aviation expert Ed Booth says the operator of this type of aircraft does not need a certification or aviation training. 
One person was on board. We are learning that information just new this morning. And just into the newsroom this morning, we are also getting new video from Surfside, Florida. Crews there are lifting a chunk of the condo that collapsed there. Five people are dead and 156 people are still missing. We are also learning there will be a media briefing this morning at 11 o'clock. We will be streaming it live on our website, newsforjacks.com. The Weather Authority and Exact Track 4D, cutting edge technology, giving you the most accurate forecast down to your street. Good morning, everyone. It's one of those days where you can go out boating in the afternoon and not worry too much about the thunderstorms. Nice to have that on a weekend and especially after a week which has been so wet. As you can see, taking a look at the marina, boats are ready to go here. And as we take a look outside, we've got temperatures in the mid 70s, very steamy. We've got that golden glow of the low sun on the horizon and not too much rain to show for. We had a few brief showers along our coastal spots of Jack's Beach here. Those have since faded. And right now, all we're looking at is this shower just sitting over the St. Mary's River between Nassau and Camden County. A little bit tighter now. It's going to be leaving you here in Kingsland. It's moving away from St. Mary's right there along Georgia Road 40. You can see it's coming down as this pushes off towards the west. We could see it continue to weaken and it may hold together as it works off towards the general vicinity of Folkestone, but you can see it, it's a ways away. And so if we put a track on it, I doubt it's going to reach that area here anytime soon. So basically, as it moves off along 40, it could reach some of those rural locations here, and uh, that will be about it. Later in the afternoon, west of Highway 301, the best spot for seeing any rain, and even then it's about a 20% chance. So we're experiencing somewhat of a pause in the rain here today. That'll be short-lived as rain will be increasing tomorrow as a tropical disturbance moves over us. 74 in Jacksonville, 80 in St. Augustine and Brunswick. And so today we're seeing mostly dry weather, but what's this? Did your ears perk? Tropical disturbance? Well, one which will come over us, but not bring us a whole lot of heavy type of uh, winds. Uh, we will see some downpours, though, especially along the backside of that system as we head through Monday afternoon. And over the week ahead, we're going to be left with a lot of deep humidity, and that will lead to daily downpours each and every day. Temperatures today stopping right around that mid 80 degree mark here around Jacksonville. You see those rain chances dwindle and then cut off into the evening. So it should be a pretty nice sunset. Good evening for your plans outdoors. And this is the forecast model showing a couple of those isolated showers here. Watch how they tend to shift inland out towards I-75 corridor. And by this evening, some area of low clouds, patchy fog, but otherwise dry conditions. We'll turn our attention here to the temperatures because today, not too bad. You know, typically we see about 91 degrees this time of year. It's going to be cooler than that. And with this easterly breeze, you can thank it for holding down the heat. We're going to be in that easterly flow here through the next several days. It's eventually turned more southerly on Thursday and then back to southwesterly winds by the end of the week. All right, so onto this tropical disturbance. You can see a small cluster of clouds. Nothing organizing here tropically. Hurricane Center is watching it, but just gives it a 20% chance of developing. You see slight rotation, but not enough to get a tropical cyclone to develop. There are thunderstorms, though, as especially along this cluster here of clouds. And that's just what we typically see each and every afternoon. So this comes right over Jacksonville tomorrow. You won't really notice much of a change in the type of uh, rain that we've seen from the prior week here. This is what we call an inverted trough where the winds go up and then down instead of like a U trough. This is simply causing convergence and tomorrow we'll see a shift in the winds to the northeast. Typically the back side of it is the wetter side. So this is kind of why we're drying out. We're going to see more sunshine in advance of that trough. And where winds come together, you typically see an accentuation of the rain. And that's going to happen right along the coastal areas around Camden, Glen County, Nassau County. Once you get from Duval County southward tomorrow, it's going to be less rain potential. But here you can see the aftermath as we head into Tuesday. Some of that uh, humid 
air that will come through and we'll see about a 60% chance of rain as we start your work week on Monday. Today, good day for the beach. Other than those rip currents, which are in the moderate category, surf is waist high, a little choppy out there, but at least there's something to ride with that water, which is at 81 degrees. Close to our air temperature here as we come into the next hour. We'll go above 81 to about the 84 here at 2 o'clock. Showers west of Jacksonville here through the afternoon. So tomorrow we're going to see tropical moisture moving in. That's why we get the boost in the rain. Then somewhat of a dip in your rain chances on Tuesday. Next week, humid conditions will lead to afternoon showers each and every day right on through the end of the week. That takes me to the end of the, my uh, forecast, but not the end of the newscast. After this break, we'll be back with much, much more. Coming up today on This Week in Jacksonville, City Council's Terrence Freeman is joining us. We're going to focus on tackling the literacy problem in the area. We'll talk about downtown development and the historic nature of his leadership position that just started this week. We've got Congresswoman Kat Kamek with us and political analyst Rick Mullaney. Join us for This Week in Jacksonville. We get started at 9. Here I can't stack, stack five, but I You've can just eat been five. eating them every time uh -huh. I look over your piles mm -hmm. disappearing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. Maybe if you lick them or smush them. I tried <laughs> smushing them, but that would be cheating and yeah. now I'm just making a mess. So we'll just leave it at the pro. I was thinking maybe a dozen, but five. That's just how difficult, difficult it is. I know. To set a record with just five? Huh, wow. I and you're only going to want to get outside and not stack these today anyway. It's nice yeah. out. They'll melt. Yeah. 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 I'm going to try it. Not with today's heat. <laughs> We're going to be dealing with temperatures in the mid 80s. Enjoy. And right now we are following breaking news out of Arlington. The pilot of an ultra light aircraft has died. We'll have much more on this throughout the day, including a press conference out of Miami at 11. See why every day more.